Hello everyone, this is the first chapter of AS Biology. This chapter can be divided into two as the structure of the cells, the animal cells, plant cells, and including the bacterial cells, and microscopy. Today we'll be starting from the microscopy part, the scales and units used in microscopy, and how to make the calculations, how to calculate the magnification and the, or the actual size and the main types of microscopes that are being used. Okay, let's briefly talk about the history of microscopy. Well, uh, for AS Biology, you don't need to remember any of these names or the dates, but there are two uh, very important people, scientists, that we need to mention here. The first one is Robert Hooke. Well, in the early days of microscopy, uh, Robert Hooke uh, examined thin slices of plant material. And as you can see here, if I magnify, that's what Robert Hooke observed and has drawn. Right? Well, he uh, drew uh, the cork cells uh, in his book published in 1665. And Robert Hooke gets the credit of naming these small pores. Uh, looking specimen and each pore as uh, being a small room called cellula or its contemporary name the cell now and a second scientist is Anton von Leeuwenhoek and he's the first scientist that observed live cells well however it was not until almost 200 years later that a, a, a general cell theory emerged from the work of several other scientists, uh, two German, one Austrian scientist, Schleiden, Schwann, and Virchow. Right? And the cell theory states that all living organisms are composed of one or more cells. Cells are the basic unit of structure and function in the organism, and cells come only from the reproduction of existing cells. This idea is one of the most familiar and important theories in biology. Well, I had to remind again, you don't need to remember any of these names and dates, just this cell, the cell theory. Well, in order to measure objects in the microscopic world, we need to use very small units of measurement, which are unfamiliar to most people. And we'll be using the SI units, the International System of Units, or the metric system. In this table, you can see the size ranges of objects that can be seen by unaided eye, or by the light microscope, or by electron microscope. The smallest structure visible with the human eye is about 50 to 100 micrometer in diameter. But how big is a micrometer? Well, one micrometer equals to 10 to the power of minus 6 meter. That actually makes it a millionth of a meter. There's even a smaller unit, nanometer. And as you can see here, one nanometer equals to the 10 to the power of minus 9 meter, which actually means 1,000 millionth of a meter. Well, never mind the this unit here will not be using it in AS biology. Your body contains about 60 million million cells varying in size from about 5 to 40 micrometers and try to imagine structures like mitochondria which have an average diameter of 1 micrometer. The small cell organelles we deal with in this chapter are ribosomes that are only about 25 nanometer in diameter. Well, you could line up about 20,000 ribosomes across the full stop at the end of this sentence in the book. Most cells are between 1 to 100 micrometer in diameter and are therefore visible only under the microscope. Well, you need to make yourself familiar to micrometer and nanometer because uh, there are many questions in multiple choice paper and even in structured paper, even in practical one, that you may need to convert micrometer to uh, millimeter or to nanometer or uh, in, in any of these. Here is a past paper question. 
Okay, let's take a look at the multiple choice question from June 2011. A cell organelle measures 4 times 10 to the power minus 1 millimeter in diameter. What's the diameter in micrometer? So this is a simple conversion question. Right, I honestly prefer uh, always using the conversion from a millimeter to micrometer or from a micrometer to millimeter conversion. Well, you might be given different units such as centimeter instead of millimeter or uh, you might be asked to convert it to nanometer or vice versa. But does not matter, I mean, not to confuse the numbers, I always prefer millimeter to micrometer or the other way around because it's easier that way. If you are given in centimeter, first make it to millimeter, which is 10 times, right? Uh, so from millimeter to micrometer, from a larger unit to a smaller unit, it's always times a thousand, right? And from a micrometer, from a smaller unit to a larger unit, from micrometer to millimeter, it's always divided by a thousand. So in this question, we have 4 times 10 to the power minus 1 millimeter and we need micrometer so I basically need to multiply by a thousand right which practically means 10 to the power 3 right here we have minus 1 so the correct answer should be 10 to the power 2 So B is the correct answer. There are two fundamental different types of microscope now in use, the light microscope and the electron microscope. And both use a form of radiation uh, in order to form an image of the specimen that is being examined. The light microscope uses light or visible light uh, spectrum of the electromagnetic wavelength. Uh, as a radiation and while the electron microscope uses electrons. Well, microscopes had been available since the beginning of the 17th century, but uh, the golden age of the light microscopy can easily be said to be the 19th century. Here you can see a light microscope or more specifically a compound light microscope. Well, it's called as compound because the light passes through two lenses, one here Again, one here, that's the reason why this is called a compound light microscope or just light microscope. There are two very important parameters in microscopy, magnification and resolution or resolving power. Well, magnification is a ratio of an object's image size to its real size. A greater magnification does not necessarily mean fine detail or higher detail. That would detail can be explained by resolution, which we'll be talking about it very soon. So first, let's check out how magnification can be calculated. Well, this I referring to the size of the image, size of the image, right? And A means actual, or the real size, and M referring to magnification. Right. Well, keep this triangle in mind. It will come very handy later on. So there are two possible scenarios in such questions. Why two? Because the I, the size of the image, can always be calculated by yourself by just using a ruler. Right? By using a ruler, you can measure the length of any particular uh, distance. And then you may get yourself a, a millimeter value, which can then be converted into micrometer. So, two possible scenarios. Either you might be asked to calculate the actual size, the real size, right? The real size. Or the magnification of the micrograph. The magnification of the micrograph. Well, here we have a micrograph from page 8 of your book. So, what do we need? We need the magnification which is I over A right? so I means the size of the image measure the length of the cell by using my ruler okay by using my ruler and 
then preferably turning this number, let's say y number, into micrometer. And I need the actual size, the real length, and which is given in the question, which is 80 micrometer. Okay. So what is important here, what's very important here is that you make sure that you use the same units for both of them. Right? So if the actual size is micrometer, then the size of the image should be micrometer, or both of them should be millimeter. Okay, And then we get the magnification. And also keep in mind that in such questions, especially in uh, paper 2 or paper 3, whenever you need to write the magnification, always use an X, let's say 400 times, or just write 400 and times inwards. This is very important to note down. So how about the questions that you're given a scale bar? Well, all you need to do is measure the length of the scale bar and then substitute this and the length it represents into the equation. That's it. Okay, here is another multiple choice question from June 2013. So here an electron micrograph of a chloroplast is given in the question. The length of the chloroplast along the line shown is 80 millimeter. The actual length of the chloroplast is 10 micrometer. So what is the magnification of the chloroplast? So what do we need? We need magnification. So it's size of the image over actual size. So it's 80 millimeter over 10 micrometer. Well, we got a problem here. So one of them is millimeter, one of them is micrometer. So I need to make sure both of the units are the same. So I prefer millimeter to convert to micrometer. So it's 80 times 10 to the power 3 or 10. Right? So basically these zeros are gone. So the answer should be 8 times 10 to the power 3. And what our unit will be? Our unit is micrometer. So the correct answer is B. And now the second important concept in microscopy, resolution or resolving power. Well, uh, resolving power is a measure of the clarity of the image. It's the minimum distance two points can be separated and still be distinguished as two points. Well, resolving power primarily depends on the wavelength of the source and then the quality of the lens. You don't need to know this in detail, just uh, a brief overview. Electromagnetic radiation has certain wavelength, right? And what we call is the visible light has a wavelength between 400 nanometer and 700 nanometer, right? And as you can see here, uh, the infrared microwaves and TV and radio waves have greater wavelength, while on the left side, the, U, the ultraviolet UV X-ray and the gamma rays have a shorter wavelength. Well, why is this important? Light microscope uses the visible light. So that will be the wavelength between 400 to 700 nanometer. Electron microscope use electron beams. The electrons have a very short, very small wavelength. This makes a great, uh, very significant difference in the resolving power of light microscope and the light microscope, which will be in the next video.